Greetings, all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends. A warm welcome, a warm Lenten blessings to all of you from your past Yeti. <clears throat> so, this is our last week when we go through the meditations on the sufferings and death of Jesus Christ, reliving the Passion, making it completely where you can use it by yourself to go to your Lenten journey, whatever you want to do by yourself, of course. You're always free to do whatever. So, for today it is Mark 15, 24. And Mark 15, verses 24 to 28. And they crucified him. If that is the end of all we do, then all we do is foothill. We may deny that. Indeed, we may be able for a while to ignore our personal dyings altogether by attending to the present day. Here we are, and now we are. No need to think that we will or will not be. Or we may romanticize our grander passions into something timeless, pieces of ourselves that must live forever or last forever. As poets call their verses, deathless. As lovers can't conceive such love as dares to die. We may philosophize our immortality by the arrogant, godlike presumption that simply because we are, and because we are aware that we are, we cannot not be. But if that waits at the ends of our lives to end them, it cancels not just the next day, nor just <clears throat> the continuance of living. It swallows the whole life, even back to its beginning. And suddenly we are not, as though we never had been. There are those who console themselves that history, at least, will remember them. But if that is the end of human endeavor, and so of humanity, then who will remember history? Oh, people, if that defines us so that we who came from nothing also go back to nothing, then that is a worm that curls inside our every act like a parasite eating the lasting value out of it. Even in our dearest kissing is a parasite, which shall, on our day that, I mean on our that day, excuse me, prove that this act too was futile. And all our loving so much sounds and fury, signifying nothing. The planets their civilizations and their loads of people all need a central sun to hold them together to keep them wheeling in good order to bequate them shape and meaning this through needs a center but if that center is empty that strengthless that it cannot hold Things fly apart into absurdity. Finally, every deed is hollow. Ourselves mere spasms in a mindless infinity. And all our glorious history remembered only so long as it is. Forgotten. When it is not. Forever. A nothing. A vanity. We are the dreams the comets can't recall. We were, for a while, 
a walking dust. But the Creator God put a cross in the very center of human history to be its center ever. The Son of God, the gift of God, the love of God, the endless light of the self-sufficient God filled the emptiness which was that at our core. People here is eternal life in the very midst of us. And now, therefore, it is the person and the passion of Jesus Christ which defines us. And because of him, we go no longer down to nothing. Our end is the beginning of a perfect union with God, the beginner of everything. Behold, this is the central event of the whole of history. Behold, this is the sun that keeps the planets and bequeaths importance to the peoples and makes significant even me and all I do. And they crucify him. It happened. Eternity entered time. They crossed at the cross. We are altogether meaningless, except God touch us. God touched us ever here. We fly into an infinite of hell, separated from life and from each other and from divinity forever, except God holds us. God holds us here. My dear ones, I kiss you and my kiss is pure and good. It lasts for you forever because my love is strong and bright and rich and true and worthy forever. For what? Because my Savior is. Mark 15, 24 to 28. And they crucified him. They divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his right. I stand apart. I draw no one's attention. I have covered my head. These are the things I see. I see four soldiers upon a low hill. Their greater labor done, their duty now to wait. They are hunching over the few benefits of the morning's assignment. And that is, by a grim tradition, they can keep the final possessions of those they crucify. So, now they're casting lots for an undergarment, a rope, a belt, sandals. No money here, not even a script. No matter, the soldiers are passing time. It's nearly noon. The centurion stands over them with his arms folded, gazing up at a coming thunderhead of cloud, squinting, figuring. Above the soldiers, above the centurion, centurion would yet the sun and the lowering cloud hang three men on crosses, each of them stripped to a loin cloth, a rubber, a rubber, and you. The wind is picking up, dust blows by, and this is what I see. A wooden board is nailed roughly over your head, chalk white and burned with the indictment, the king of the Jews. I say, yes, 
In my soul I cry, yes, yes. I keep my face in passing for fear of the centurion and the chief priests. But yes, I say, it is what we've called Messiah, the king of the Jews. The Lodish Romans are right. They mean to mock us, to mock all the Jews as a single people. But their scorn tells the truth. And I take it a bitter satisfaction in it. Let the chief indignation I just laugh. I hate this world. But if you're the Messiah, why are you crucified? How can this be? Jesus, my Jesus, forgive me. My mind rejects the things I see. Nothing fits. I call you King. I call you Master and Lord. You are the Lord. No one has loved as you do. No, not ever. Lord. But I never imagined goodness to be so broken. Jesus, you grieve me. Jesus, you confuse me. This is what I see. Your knees keep buckling. You push yourself up with your legs to breathe. I think but the legs lose strength and pop at the knees, and your body drops. Uh, the arms stretch, the hands clutch spikes, your shoulders joints separate, your muscles draw out like ropes, your rib cage splash. I can count the bones. How do you breathe when your chest is stretched flat? Jesus, you're not breathing. Your own body, when it drags on your arms like that, why? Your own weight is suffocating you. Breathe, sweet Jesus, please breathe. Make fists on the spiked heads. Lift yourself up. Open your mouth. Lord Jesus, please, and don't die. Don't stop breathing. Breathe. Breathe. What? What are you? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Not now. Not while you hang so low. Not in surrender. No. Jesus, don't look at me. Don't look at me like that. I can't stand it if you look at me. My whole body burns like fire. You make me too much here. You're wasting yourself. You should fight for your life. Lord, you cannot die. Rise up. Rise up on your arms and fight and breathe. But the eyes of Christ ask, Do you take offense at this? There were times when I begged for your glance because I needed to know your love, that you loved me. But you did not so much as lift your eyes. I lacked the signs of your presence and your affection, and I felt abandoned. So then I was angry. Now you look directly at me, and I feel sick with my own presence, immediate, real, astonishing over the age, and my shame. Now oh, Jesus, does love from the cross have to hurt so much? Hurt you with dying, hurt me when your dying draws me to yourself. Why is it now that you gaze at me? Do you take offense at this? Do you also wish to go away? Do you? Now 
beautiful people, may the Almighty God bless you in your day. Hovering you through everything you do and comfort you. And let him bless you and yours, loved ones and your brothers and sisters. And as you walk further to your way to Easter, consider that Christ had to die to save you, to save the world. Blessings, my dear ones, and peace be with you. This is your Pastor Yadi. Bye.